Hey, and a very, very good evening to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about linear regression model. We'll be looking at how to execute a linear regression model using StatCraft B. Even before I proceed to explain how, re how linear regression model can be executed using StatCraft B, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Firstly, what exactly do we mean by linear regression model? Linear regression model is a supervised learning technique. It's a supervised machine learning technique, meaning here we have a dependent variable. Secondly, linear regression works best when the nature of relationship between the dependent and the independent variables is linear. Thirdly, in the case of linear regression model, the dependent variable must be a scale variable. It cannot be a categorical variable. It has to be a scale variable. There are two types of linear regression model. The first one is what is called as simple linear regression model. And the second one is what is called as multiple linear regression model. We'll be looking at both of these things, simple linear regression as well as multiple linear regression. This is the interface of StatCraft. It has a friendly GUI. It looks just like a spreadsheet. Let me load the data set which I will be working on. To load the data set, I will click on the view button. This will produce several other buttons. I can click on the source option here. There are a list of files which I can load. I will choose the data set which is called as Boston Housing data set. There are 18 columns and 506 rows in this particular data set. Let me load this particular data set, Boston Housing data set. As you can see here, there are very, very interesting variables in this particular data set. To look at the description of this particular data set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Kaggle from where I have downloaded the data set. As you can see here, this is the Boston Housing data set. It is derived from information collected by U.S. Census Service concerning housing in the area of Boston. Some of the important variables are per capita crime rate by town. You have another variable called as NOx, which basically means nitric oxide concentration represented in parts per million. There's a variable called as RM, which represents the average number of rooms per dwelling. Similarly, you have a variable called as PT ratio, which stands for pupil teacher ratio by town. There's a variable B, which represents the proportion of blacks by town. You also have another, another variable called as L stat, which stands for percentage of lower status by population. The last variable in the data set is med V or median value of owner occupied homes in dollar thousands. This last variable, that is the median value of owner-occupied homes, will be used as the dependent variable. The rest of the variables will be used as independent variables. Let me go back to StatCraft. This is the data set that I have. So to build a linear model, what we are going to do is click on the analysis button. The moment you click on the analysis button, you can see StatCraft displays the list of options in the menu. What I'm going to do is choose the option regression. In the drop down menu, you can see correlation as well as linear regression. Since I intend to build a linear regression model, let me click on the option linear regression. In the left hand side, you can see all the variables that are presented present in the data set. In the right hand side, you have the dependent list, dependent variables, as well as independent variables. Under the dependent variable, I'm going to choose the variable met V, which is the median value of housing price in Boston. Under the independent variables list, I'm going to choose the variable crime rate. So in the first attempt, I'm going to build a simple linear regression model. SLR or simple linear regression model is a model wherein you're taking only one independent variable. I repeat, in the case of simple linear regression, you're going to take only one independent variable to predict the median value of homes. If you click on the options feature, 
you, you can choose to add the constant or the intercept term. You also have what is called as the Durbin Watson statistic, which can be used to check for autocorrelation. Then you have a test for normality. You can check for multicollinearity. Conditional number is an index which can be used to check for multicollinearity. But since I have only one independent variable, I will ignore many of these options. I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to use one dependent variable and one independent variable. I'll hit the OK button. StatCraft takes a couple of moments to run the simple linear regression model. And as you can see here, this is the output window in StatCraft. StatCraft, to my knowledge, is the only software which also gives you the code that it is running in the backend to generate the output. You can see here, this is the Python code which it has used at the backend to run the simple linear regression model. We are going to go by a method which is called as OLS. OLS stands for Ordinary Least Squares Method. Let me scroll down here. You can see the model summary statistic. It prints a lot of output. We don't need to look at each and every metric. For us, what is really important is what is called as R squared metric. You can see here, the R squared for this model is 0.15 or 15%. R square is a number which lies between 0 and 1. R squared is popularly called as coefficient of determination. I repeat, R squared is popularly called as coefficient of determination. If the R squared value is greater than 0 0.70, it means that the model fits the data well. On the other hand, if the R square value is close to 0, it means that the model does not fit the data well. In our case, the R square value is 0.15, which is not such a good model but it is expected considering the fact that we have used only one independent variable. So what does this 15% mean? This 15% simply means that 15% of the variation in the dependent variable is explained by the set of independent variables that we have used. So crime rate is the independent variable that I have used. So crime rate explains 15% of the variation in the median value of housing price. Further, when you look at the ANOVA table, it reports the F statistic, the degrees of freedom for both the residuals as well as the model. We can look at the probability value, 1.17 into 10 power minus 19, which is a very, very tiny number. Zero point, there are 19 zeros, and then you have a number, 117. Zero point followed by 19 zeros, which is clearly less than 0 0.05. Compare this number with 0 0.05, we can say that R square is significant. In other words, we can say that building a regression model is better than guessing the median value of housing price in Boston. Further, we also are able to see the coefficient stable here. You can see the intercept term is 24.033. The value of crime, the, the coefficient value for crime is minus 0 0.15, which means that there is a negative relationship between crime rate and the median value of housing price, which is understandably, which is understandable simply because as the crime rate in a locality goes up, the median value of the housing price would come down. When you look at the p-value, the p-value here is very, very small. Again, when you compare this with 0 0.05, it is smaller than 0 0.05 and hence we can conclude by saying that crime rate is a very, very important variable. It is a significant predictor which influences the median value of housing price. Let me just scroll up and show you the R square value. The R square value is 0.15. Is there a way in which we can improve the R square value? To improve the R square value, we can add additional variables. Let me show you how we can improve the R square value. I'll again go back to view, choose the option data. This will show me the data view. I can click on the analysis button, choose regression. Here, I'll go back to linear regression. 
remember in the first instance i had built a simple linear regression with only one independent variable when you use only one independent variable only 15% of the variation in the dependent variable namely median value of housing price was explained since i want to improve the r square for a better model what i'm going to do is i'm going to include additional independent variables as you can see here the number of rooms the nitric oxide concentration the number of rooms the age variable distance radius variable further tax variable pupil to teacher ratio the proportion of blacks the number of uh, the percentage of people who are from the lowest state uh, lowest strata of society and median value in which we've used as the dependent variable now i'm going to use i've used at least 13 independent variables so if you're using only one independent variable it is called as slr or simple linear regression when you are using multiple independent variables to predict the value of the dependent variable it is called as mlr or multiple linear regression so this is the fundamental difference between simple linear regression and multiple linear regression in the case of simple linear regression you have one independent variable However, in the case of multiple linear regression, you're using multiple independent variables. Let me just go ahead and click on the option OK. OK, our output is ready. You can see here, this is the Python code which StatCraft has used. I'll be particularly interested in R square. You can see here now that I've used more independent variables, the R square jumps from 15% to 0.74%. If you recall the earlier R square, let me just show you the earlier R square. This is the ANOVA table that we saw earlier. For some reason, it's taking some time. Let me just go back to the earlier linear regression output. Yes, this is what I wanted to show you. The earlier R square value was merely 15% when you used one independent variable. Now, now that I've used multiple independent variables, you can see the new R square value, which looks more promising. The new R square value is 0.74. 74% of the variation in the dependent variable is now explained by the set of independent variables that I have entered. The adjusted R square is used to compare the model performance. When you have two different models and you want to check the model performance, you can use adjusted R square. Adjusted R square penalizes the model for having additional variables. Similarly, you can also look at log likelihood as well as archaic information criteria and Bayesian information criteria. I'm just focusing on one of the metrics here, namely R square. When I scroll down, you can see here the coefficient table. For each of the variables here, the coefficient value is displayed. Some of these variables are significant and some others are insignificant. You can see here the variable index this is the third variable from the top. This variable has a p-value of 0 0.73, which is clearly bigger than 0 0.05. Since the p-value is bigger than 0 0.05, you can go ahead and conclude that the variable index is insignificant. The same argument holds good for the variable age as well, because when you look at the when you look at the p-value for the variable age, the p-value is 0 0.95, which is clearly greater than 0 0.05. Since it is greater than 0 0.05, you can go ahead and say that the variable age is also insignificant. For the rest of the variables, the p-value is very, very tiny, indicating that these variables are significant and they contribute to the model. Let me take this opportunity to also explain the coefficient. These are what we call as unstandardized coefficients. I repeat, these are what we call as unstandardized coefficients. Now, when you look at the value of minus point minus 17.76, the value is minus 
0.76. This is for the variable NOx. Remember, what is NOx? NOx is nitric oxide concentration in in the uh, in, uh, nit nitric oxide concentration uh, in air, which is uh, which is measured in terms of parts per million. So what this minus 17 tells us is if the nitric oxide concentration in air goes up by one unit, the median value of the homes come down by $17,000. If nitric oxide concentration go up by one unit, the median value of the housing price drops by 17 units. That's the way we interpret it. Similarly, when you look at the variable RM, it has a positive quotient. So what does this mean? If the average rooms in a house increase, the housing price go up by three units. Because there's a positive sign next to the quotient, I'm saying that the housing price go up by three units for every unit increase in the number of rooms. So this is how you can interpret the quotient's value. So in this video, we have seen what's the difference between simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. Fundamentally, in the case of simple linear regression, we use only one independent variable. However, in the case of multiple linear regression, we use multiple independent variables. So with this, I've come to the end of today's presentation. Thank you very much for watching this video. May I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my videos. Have a great day ahead.